Hi, fourth grade. We're ready for chapter two. Burping. It's morning. I go back to bed. Moan. My head is a volcano of burping lava. Oh no, I feel a big burp coming. Groan. It has blown up in my head. I can't move. Oh. You haven't got a temperature, Jack. Mom puts her hand on my forehead. Her hand is hot. I look up at her. All I can see is her blonde hair fluffed up like it has exploded. It always looks like that, except when she tries to smooth it down. And then it looks like a flat explosion with bits out on the side. Do you think it's something you've eaten? You might have an allergy. Mom's hair is a frizzball. Oh, I feel another burping lava attack. I hold onto my head and look up pathetically. No, I whisper. It couldn't be breakfast. I didn't eat anything different. Just the usual bacon, eggs, two sausages, fried onions, grilled tomatoes. I only had one piece of toast with honey. I had whole wheat bread to be healthy. The two raisin muffins had nothing on them except margarine. Oh yes, and a bit of cinnamon and sugar. I squeezed two oranges in Rob's special old-fashioned juice squisher to wash it all down. He lets us use his juice squisher when he's not here. I did have a green apple afterwards. It was pretty sour. Maybe that gave me a headache. I look at Mum. She's bought the green apples from Mr. Napoli's fruit and vegetable market next door, where we live. Mr. Napoli's fruit and vegetable market used to be called a fruit shop, but he has spent a lot of money renovating it. Mr. and Mrs. Napoli and my friend Anna, Anna work like hyperactive ants, painting and pulling out shelves. I helped with the shelves. Now you can walk around the aisles and pick your own fruit and vegetables. Plus, there is bread and juice, nuts and eggs that are for sale. We always get the farm fresh eggs, even though they cost a bit more. That's because of this documentary we saw on battery hens. Thousands of hens were kept in huge barns with no daylight, crammed into cubicles, pecking each other. I'd really hate that. No place to get away from everyone. Nowhere to escape from other pecking beaks. Mom and Samantha closed their eyes, which is typical, but Rob watched the whole thing just like me. Actually, Rob put his arm around Mom. I don't know if I like that. Mr. and Mrs. Napoli's shop is now called the Super Delicio Frutologist Market, and he is a frutologist. When Anna told me that, I tried not to laugh. I couldn't help making a couple of jokes about it, though. Mom says I'm a comic. I do find things pretty funny sometimes, and I'm always collecting jokes. I found a few good ones on the Internet, but mostly I like to do original stuff. The fruitologist joke is mine. Is your dad a tomatoologist, or an orangeologist, or a pumpkinologist, or an eggologist? I have to admit I went on a bit. Anna was getting pretty mad. Her curly black hair started bouncing up and down as she shook her head. From experience, that is a dangerous sign, but I just couldn't stop. The jokes sort of had a life of their own. Onionologist, carrotologist, melanologist. You're a complete idiot, Jack. Anna's big brown eyes sort of look like cannonballs aimed at my head. Those jokes aren't even smart. She turned up her nose at me. She's a bit like that. I can't be bothered with you. I know I shouldn't have asked her this, but with her nose turned up and her yelling at me that I was an idiot, what could I do? Anna, your dad's not a fruitologist, geologist, proctologist. I know, I know. Peanuts, walnuts, coconuts. I was laughing so hard by then. That's it. Nuts. Ha! Ah, he's a nutologist. He's a nutologist. She got so angry that she stormed out of her parents' shop. She wouldn't talk, for me, talk to me for four days. That was pretty tough because Samantha and I go nearly every second day into Mr. and Mrs. Napoli's Super Delicio Fruitologist Market. Anyway, I told her 20 times that I was really, truly sorry. I wore her down until she eventually said it was okay, except I am never allowed to mention nuts around her, which is pretty difficult when I have to buy pistachio nuts for Mom. Anna is 11 like me. We've known each other since we were five when Mom, my sister, and I moved into our third floor unit. Mom had to take on a huge mortgage, which, which meant she was always working to pay off the loan, and Samantha and I were always sent to the Napoli's fruit shop to play with Anna. So even though Anna's a girl, she's nearly my best friend. 
I hardly tell anyone that, except Samantha knows. Oh, my head. Moan, it hurts so bad. I feel exhausted and slide deeper under my covers into my bed. I like my bed. It's new. Well, sort of new. I got it when Rob bought Mom a king-size bed and Mom gave me her old double bed. Samantha has a single bed. Rob said I would need a double bed soon because I'm going to be nearly six feet tall one day. I'd like to be over six feet tall. It would mean that no one could push me around. I think of George Hamill. A shiver wriggles down my spine. Everyone knows you have to keep out of George Hamill's way unless you're in his gang. Who'd want to be in his gang unless you're stupid or a loser? Mom puts the blanket over me. Just close your eyes while I get some medicine. Mom always has something in her kitchen that will cure me and everyone else. It's a pretty wild kitchen. Everything is bright orange except the countertops. Mom says the orange cupboards are the only thing that Dad left us. Mom took them with us to the unit, but she bought the countertops, Mission Brown countertops. The color is supposed to represent Earth, that's the brown bit, and Soul, that's the Mission bit. To be honest, the countertops look like mud. Mom says it's a very meaningful color. It says it was a very meaningful color when she was a hippie. I think she's still a hippie. I've seen photographs of Dad and Mom when they were younger. They're funny. Dad wore small, round, metal rim glasses like John Lennon and multicolored shirts and shorts and open leather sandals. Mom wore crazy, bright, long dresses. She still wears crazy colors. It is a bit embarrassing sometimes. Mom talks about changing the kitchen colors but has never gotten around to doing it. She hardly ever looks at those old photographs or talks about Dad. I'd like to ask her about him but she goes quiet when I do and I can see that she wants to cry. Dad married someone else and we don't even know where he lives. I can't remember him much except he liked to use methylated spirits for cuts. It kills the germs and nearly killed me. It really stung. Mom doesn't use methylated spirits. I don't know if it's because of Dad or because she hates stinging. I do. Or because she's got her own special cures. She uses tea tree oil for itchy bites talc for the rash I sometimes get from my belt rubbing on my skin, sorbeline cream for sunburn, hot salty water for red lumps anywhere on me, and ginger ale for headaches. I don't know how it helps, but Mum is back with the ginger ale. I half sit up to drink it and then lie back down again. Mum kisses my cheek and then strokes my head. It makes me feel better. There will be no school for you today. No school, no school. I can feel the volcano simmering down, except for a stubborn throbbing in my eye. Mom starts patting down her hair. That means she's upset. Darling, I, I've got to go to work. Mom used to be a library assistant, but it was only part time. Since we moved into our unit, she has always worked full time at the 24 hour, seven day a week supermarket attached to the service station. If I stick my head out of my bedroom window, I can see the gas station and the Napoli's Super Delicio Fruitologist Market. Our unit has two and a half bedrooms, one room for mom, one room for me, and a half of room for Samantha. Samantha's room used to be a dining room. Samantha doesn't need more space because she is short. She's not really going to be tall like me. Our unit is at the front of the building. I really like my bedroom. I can see everything that happens on the street. Kids hanging around, people buying hot bread from the old bakery, car crashes, fire engines screaming down the road. We know most of the shopkeepers. Mrs. Jonah always gives Samantha and me a caramel when we, walk, when we buy milk. And Mr. Green always gives us the best bacon. And Joe always gives me the best deal when I rent movies. The other day he put in The Lion King for Samantha and an action-packed movie for me for nothing. Mom hates action films. Too violent, she says. Luckily, Rob watched it with me. I've got to go to work. Will you be all right, darling? I don't mind Mom calling me darling when I'm sick. I nod weakly. That molten lava is still moving around in my head. Samantha can stay home with you today to keep you company. Samantha's already arrived with the Monopoly. She sits at the end of my bed. There's plenty of room. I'll call Nana to come over at lunchtime. You can ring me if there's a problem. Excellent. 
Nan is good at Monopoly, too, and she'll bring over some cookies. I look sadly at Mom, and I hold my head. It could take another day before you're better. I nod again weakly. Another day? My head calms down a bit more with that news. No school tomorrow. No school. I feel the erupting volcano stop.